Well, good evening. Welcome to the April edition of Sky Views, brought to you by the New Jersey State Museum Planetarium. I'm Bill Murray, Planetarium Technician at the Planetarium. Let's take a look at some of the interesting sights in our April skies this year. We're currently looking towards the northwest uh, about 8.30 on the evening of April 11th, which is about a half hour or so before the last twilight has faded from our evening skies. And the first thing that draws our attention is the very bright planet Venus. Venus is the evening star at this time of year, and as the sun set, it sets in the west, uh, it will become very visible over the western horizon. And this evening it acts as a guide uh, to a uh, very interesting deep sky object, because just to the right of Venus is the very bright star cluster, the Pleiades. The Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, are an open star cluster in the constellation of Taurus the Bull. We've talked about them previously here on Skyviews. Uh, open clusters are clusters of between several dozen to several hundred very young stars. And we can see in the picture here uh, that the Pleiades are surrounded by a uh, haze of blue gas. Um, that's the remaining gas from star formation where the stars were born. And uh, it will be dissipated by the radiation from these hot young stars. Um, People with uh, normal vision in uh, the night sky can see six Pleiades with their unaided eyes. If you have exceptional vision, you can probably see seven, but even a small pair of binoculars will bring out dozens of the Pleiades. Venus should become visible very soon after sunset on the evening of the 11th. And as the sky begins to darken, if you do have a small pair of binoculars, you can scan a little bit to the right of Venus and you should begin to see the Pleiades pop out into the darkening sky. Initially, you will only see a few of them, but as the sky continues to darken, you'll be able to see more and more. By about 9 p.m., you should be able to see all of them in their splendor, along with Venus just a little bit to the left and in a, the field of view of a small pair of binoculars, both should be able to fit in at the same time. In addition to this site, there's another site that is visible in our early evening skies on the 11th of April, but you need a very low western horizon to be able to see it. If you scan downwards towards the horizon from Venus and the Pleiades, just above the horizon, you will see what looks like a bright twinkling star. But that's not a star, that is the planet Mercury. The evening of April 11th is the evening of greatest eastern elongation of Mercury. That's when it's most visible in our evening skies. Mercury, being the closest planet to the Sun, is generally very difficult to see. It either sets very soon after the Sun sets or rises uh, just before the Sun rises in the morning sky, never straying very far from the Sun in our skies here on the Earth. The best time to view Mercury is during what is called its greatest elongations. In the evening sky, that becomes the greatest eastern elongation of the planet. That's what's occurring today, and where Mercury is as far separated from the Sun as it gets, and therefore most visible to us here on the Earth. So if you get a chance, and uh, it's clear on the evening of 11th, and you have your pair of binoculars to view uh, Venus and the Pleiades, Scan downwards towards the horizon if you have a low western horizon, and uh, you should be able to see the planet Mercury. However, if you don't get a chance to see it on the 11th, don't wait too long, because Mercury will be turning around and heading backwards towards the sun, uh, leaving our evening skies and heading towards the morning skies. Uh, within just a few days, it will not be visible anymore. So uh, if you get a chance, around the time of April 11th, and you have a good low western horizon, get out and you may be able to see the planet Mercury. Looking towards the east, about 9 p.m., also on the evening of April 11th, we see the constellation of Virgo, the Maiden, rising over our eastern horizon. Uh, Virgo is a constellation of the zodiac. It's the second largest constellation in the night sky. Uh, 
just behind the constellation of Hydra, which is just to its south, right here. Virgo in Greek mythology uh, represents the Greek god goddess Demeter, who is the goddess of agriculture. And we see here holding her holding a shaft of wheat, represented by the bright first magnitude star Spica. Uh, in Greek mythology, Demeter was the agriculture goddess, and she had a daughter named Persephone, who attracted the attentions of Hades, who was the Greek god of the underworld. And Hades kidnapped Persephone and brought her to the underworld. Uh, Demeter, uh, distraught over losing her daughter, neglected her duties, and the, the earth began to cool, and crops began to die, and uh, the Greek gods realized that if that didn't change, humanity would be destroyed. Um, so they uh, brokered a deal um, between uh, Demeter and Hades, where Persephone would uh, return to the earth for six months out of the year, and then go back to Hades for six months out of the year. And uh, this is the origin in Greek mythology of the seasons. So during the six months of the year when Persephone and uh, Demeter are together, Demeter is happy and agriculture flourishes. And during the six months of the year when Persephone is in Hades, Demeter grieves and the earth begins to cool, plants die, and snow fills the air. The northwestern part of the constellation of Virgo is one of the more interesting areas of the sky, both for professional and for amateur astronomers. It's the location of the Virgo supercluster of galaxies. Back in the 19th century, astronomers believed that the entire universe was just comprised of those things that were visible in our Milky Way galaxy. And so this area of the sky perplexed them. Uh, they turned their telescopes towards this part of the sky and saw dozens of what were called nebula, uh, little cloudy spots in the night sky. Astronomers didn't really have a good idea of what these objects were. Uh, they called this area of the sky the field of the nebula. In the 1920s, the American astronomer Edwin Hubble began a study of these nebula using what was at that time the largest telescope in the world, which was the 100-inch diameter Hooker Telescope on Mount Wilson in California, Hubble made two very important discoveries. The first was that these nebula were actually far enough away from the Milky Way galaxy that they were not part of it. In fact, they were galaxies on, in their own right. And the second, that the farther away these galaxies were, the faster they were moving away from us. So Hubble discovered the fact that the universe is expanding, uh, one of the major discoveries in astronomy and physics in the 20th century. The Virgo supercluster is the nearest large cluster of galaxies to us here on the Earth. It's roughly about 54 million light years away from us. Galaxies do tend to form in clusters. If you have a small telescope, uh, that will reveal about two dozen of these galaxies. Larger size amateur telescopes will show several hundred galaxies in this area of the sky, giving amateur astronomers an observing project that may take several years to complete in viewing all of them. The largest telescopes on Earth show that the Virgo cluster contains more than 2,000 galaxies of different sizes, shapes, and structures, uh, making this area of the sky one of the most interesting uh, to view through any size telescope. So if you get a chance and you have a telescope, turn it on the Virgo cluster this spring. Well, that's a brief look at some things visible in our April skies here uh, this year in New Jersey. Hopefully the weather will be clear and you'll get a chance to view some of them. From all of us here at the New Jersey State Museum Planetarium, until next time, clear skies.